Okay, so today um, for data com class, okay, we will talk about chapter seven multiplexing, and um, for this mo morning, I can cover just the TDM and the FDM. Okay, let's see if we'll, whether we have time to go over the TDMA and FDMA. Um, homework five is due now, and homework six I will post tomorrow. This morning, I try to upload in the MaxLearn and the problem, the, there's some problem with the system. So if I don't forget, I will try to upload tomorrow, okay? Um, but it's due next Thursday. It's maybe a little bit more complicated, uh, so that you see um, a little bit more complicated problems, okay? Um, for the multiplexing, okay? Multiplexing means that we combine data from many users um, together, okay? So if, suppose you have like, let's say you have like 25 students here and you want to, sh to, want to send information, okay? Suppose, suppose everyone wants to send like 10 megabit per six, okay? And uh, you don't want to pay for individual lines, okay? You want to kind of join together and buy like maybe a fiber optics, okay? So so that is um, um, it's gonna be one line, okay? And it's cheaper than buying twenty five lines, okay? So you may buy one line that is like one gigabit per sec or ten gigabit per sec, okay? And then you, you divide by yourself. So how can uh, everyone share the same line, okay? You can do that by using the multiplexer. Now. You can see that, um, I, I say that it will be used for the high capacity transmission links such as the optical fiber, right? Because it have a lot of bandwidth and also the microwave link. Um, I say that the higher the data rate is the lower the cost per kilobit per sec. So it's like when you buy things like buy a dozen, you know, like you go to macro and you buy like a big, you know, a big package and you have like maybe um, 20, 30s of them. Okay, small packs inside. It will be cheaper than buying individual one, right? So it's the same thing. So if you have like one big uh, fiber optic line, you will um, each of the user, okay, will pay less because you kind of you join together, right? So you pay maybe like five percent of the cost. Another one pay five percent, and um, it's enough for your transmission in your application, okay? So if you can see this, you have the end inputs coming in, okay? This one may be in one room or in like one building, you know that you mark like a close location. And this one may be a long distance, maybe 50 kilometers, you know, so you, you will pay only for one line for really long distance. And then you, at the destination, then you, um, then you, Demultiplexer, okay? You have a demultiplexer here, so you demultiplex, separate it into n outputs. Now, the multiple multiplexing techniques that we will cover in this course will be the frequency division multiplexing and the time division multiplexing. So, dy in frequency or dy in time. The easiest one for the TDM is synchronous TDM. There is another uh, more complicated one that is called statistical TDM, okay? Uh, statistical TDM is not in the sheet, but I will cover it a little bit. It used to be in the sheet, but I cut it out because it's a lot of details. So we have um, FDM, we have synchronous TDM, and we have statistical TDM. Okay. For the FDM, let's look at an example, okay? You carry, um, you have three signals, okay? So you have three signals. Suppose uh, the spectrum of the three signals are like this, okay? To combine with the FDM, then you modulate, okay? You modulate by multiplying a carrier frequent, a carrier signal. So this one you multiply with F, uh, cosine 2 pi F1t. This one you, you multiply with cosine 2 pi F2t. And this one with the cosine 2 pi F3t, okay? 
Okay? And then if F1, F2, F3, they are separate, you know, they are far apart, um, the modulated spectrum will not overlap. Okay? So this one, you got the spectrum over here, and then you got the spectrum over here, and then you get the spectrum over here. So since they are at different bandwidths or different frequency range, then you can add them together to combine to get one signal, okay? One signal spectrum. So you get something like this. You get channel one, channel two, channel three, like this, okay? So you send this signal. You can see that F1, F2, F3, they have to be um, further apart enough so that the spectrum does not overlap. If, if it's close, to, if F1 and F2 are close together and you have an overlap signal, okay, you cannot use it, okay, because the, the signal will be, will, will change, okay, will change, it will not stay the same. Now, if you have this, you send this one over the line, over the fiber optic line, or over the, uh, usually, actually, usually FDM is like analog signal, okay, so maybe you send it over the microwave link. Um, so, at the other end, how do you separate this? How, how do we separate this, do you know? To get to get the signal from for channel one and two and three, how do you do that? How do you separate it? Huh? Minus? What else? What do you say? Did you have one? Huh? I mean, yeah. What do you think? Demodulate. Uh, what else? How you, you receive this one, right? This one is the combined signal, okay? So how, suppose we have 25, you know, in the room. So we have 25 of this spectrum. So how, how do we, at the other end, patient I want to talk to Mr. A, for example. So we have to take only your signal to Mr. A, right? You know, and, and not the other signals to, to, the, to that destination. So how to separate that? Do you know about filter? Have you heard about filter before? Yeah. So you use filter, okay? If you use filter, if you have a filter that pass only this channel, these two will be eliminated, right? If you have another filter here, okay, that pass only this frequency range, then only this one will pass, okay? Or this one, you have another filter here. So you use, um, different filters to, to get the spectrum that you want. If you look at the whole system, okay? Okay, uh, before we look at this picture, okay? Uh, we see that because this picture we use single sideband. So recall that for single sideband transmission, we use the bandwidth only um, half of it, right? We, we send only the upper sideband or the lower sideband. So we use the frequency band, only half of the double sideband spectrum. And this is a double sideband, right? Remember, this is a sub double sideband because original is like this. Original is like this, so this is zero, okay? So actually the, the spectrum is like, suppose zero to B, this one, the width is to B, right? To B because it's double side band, but if you send only one side of it, it become B, okay? If you send only one side, it's gonna be called single side band. So in this picture, we use a uh, single side band transmission, okay? So suppose we have a voice signal, okay? We modulate. Now we modulate with different frequency, carrier frequency. So this is, we modulate with F1, F2, F3. And what is the, uh, what is it? Is this a lower sideband or upper sideband? What is this? Hmm? Lower or upper? Upper. This is, we use upper sideband. Okay, so we use upper sideband here. Then you add them together, you get this signal. Okay, this is a frequency domain. 
this picture is frequency domain of the signal. So the so the signal goes okay maybe a long distance okay and arrive at the receiver. At the receiver here, if there is no error, no noise, okay, you receive the the same signal, right? In this case, we look at suppose everything is good, okay. So you got the same thing. Then you filter. So this one you use a filter here, right? Use a filter. So you, so what you receive here, you you multiply with a filter. So you multiply with the filter that have the frequency range here, and the second one you multiply with the filter that have the frequency range in here, and this one is again the last one. Okay. So after you, um, you pass through the filter, you got the spectrum. Okay. Then do demodulate to get the original signal back. Now, um, I will use the board. Okay, so let's see if you have this signal. And then you pass to a future, okay? Suppose this is the, suppose this is the future for the first one. Okay, we will consider an ideal filter. So this signal get into the filter. What we will receive is this. Okay, this one multiply by this. Because the, the other part are all zero, right? So this multiply by zero got a zero. This multiply by, let's say this is one. So you get the same thing out. So you receive this signal. So how do you demodulate? How do you demodulate? To demodulate, you just multiply by the same carrier signal. Okay, so you multiply by cosine two pi f one t. Okay, so what do you get? Okay, do you remember that? Do you do do you remember this? If you have um, a signal like this, okay, and you, when you modulate, okay, we did this before, okay, suppose you do modulate and, um, you will get something like this, okay. Right, you will get something like this. Right? So if you have a signal like this, okay, and you, you want to demodulate, what do you do? You will change the frequency at zero, okay? When you want to, it's like you, you move uh, what you have at zero to, to center at F1, right? You move what you have at zero to center at F1, and that's why this one is moved to here. And then you also move to center at minus F1. Okay, so it's moved to here. So what is zero become the value as F1 and minus F1. The same thing here. This is zero become the value at F1. Okay, zero become the value of F1. So F1 will become the value at, at what, at what frequency? Zero go to F1, right? So F1 will go to, huh? To F1. So you get this on the right. Now, how about on the left? You have to move, okay? 
this actually if you want to look at both sides this is the imaginary part okay which is similar um, in frequency okay so this one even you move over here you will have this one over here right the minus f1 will go to zero so this part okay so this part when the minus f1 because zero go to f1 the minus f1 go to zero you shift over here okay that's that is this part here what's the positive part then how about the negative part you have to move zero to minus f1 right so you move zero to minus f1 zero to minus f1 okay So you have okay zero to minus f one. So minus f one will go to minus f two, and f one will go to zero like this. Okay. So so in order to demodulate you. Okay, in order to modulate, you multiply by two cosine two pi f one t. Okay, and then you get this signal, and then you filter. You send this one uh, through a filter. So you send this through a filter. This gonna be low pass filter. Okay. Okay, so what do you get? You will get um, the original back. S1. You see? So you get the original signal back, the, the signal is one. And this one they just draw, you know, on the positive side, okay? The negative is just the middle, it's the um, imaginary part. Okay, this is not in the sheet, so please note down. It's about demodulation. In the past, if you take, um, in you know previous years that they took the power commute, they already know this. It will be studied in power commute before this class, so so it's not in our sheet. So this is a frequency domain. Now, if you look at the time domain, you know that the frequency domain and the time domain they are the same signal, right? It's an electromagnetic signal, but we just look at it. We analyze it in terms of time or in terms of frequency spectrum okay so if we look in terms of the time if you look in terms of the time we have the same thing the same system okay the future are also the same this one is um, the voice signal okay and you multiply we modulate okay with the carrier frequency f1 so it's like you multiply by cosine 2 pi f1t you will get something like this this is like amplitude modulation because you change the amplitude of the carrier with the amplitude of the baseband okay so you got something like this look like you know the envelope look like that okay similar to the baseband this similar okay go and up here okay so this is uh, again this is higher frequency and even higher frequency okay you get this one then you add them together you got um, the signal here so this one you use uh, you send at the same time you send the three signal at the same time so the signal they are combined if you look at in time domain you cannot separate it right but if you look in the frequency domain you can use filter to separate if there is no noise okay you will receive the same thing here but if there is noise, you will have some variation on the values. 
okay? At the receiver, okay, you pass through a filter like this, you pass through a filter, okay? When you pass through a filter, you got these things back, okay? The three signal, okay? And then you demodulate by multiplying the cosine, okay? And then you get the baseband signal back. Any questions on this? Okay, um, the application for FDM is usually used with voice signal, okay? Um, because the bandwidth of the, of the voice signal, okay, is about 3100 hertz. If you remember on the um, chapter two, the first page of chapter two, we talked about the bandwidth of the speech before. Do you remember this? Okay, so this is uh, about 300 to, you know, 3,400 hertz. So in um, in the this uh, in the design, okay, we usually give. Oh, sorry. We usually give four kilohertz as one voice channel, okay which definitely have to be a single sideband because if the baseband is, you know, if the baseband is um, about, about 3,000 hertz, okay, if you do double sideband, it have to be six or seven, right? It's a little bit more than three. So if you give only four kilo, kilohertz, it means that you use single sideband like this, okay? Um, this one is the structure for this one is a hierarchy in America. Actually, this is at and is a company in America. But what I'm trying to show you is that um, we can, we can um, combine, okay? Because, because uh, we, what is the standard that they use to combine? The, the, they use to multiplex the signals together, okay? The, the real um, example. Okay, so let's look at the board here. For at and hierarchy, we have, suppose we have um, twelve of the, okay, one, two, to twelve, okay, of the voice uh, spectrum, okay. What they do is that they will modulate with um, different carrier frequency. Okay, cosine two pi f two t, and then dot dot dot. Okay, cosine two pi f um, twelve t. Okay, and then they will add these together. When they add these together, okay, you will get something like this. You mod right? You mod, and also uh, this one they use is single sideband. Okay. You use single sideband, so you get something Okay, you get something like this um, Actually, when you mod uh, to get a um, Okay, support what should I say? <laughs> to be correctly, to be correct, okay? Each of them would be um, how correct should I be? <laughs> this one, okay, it's gonna be this first, okay? And then this one will pass to a filter. To get only one side, one side band. So this is F1. At first, it's going to be center. It's F1, right? After after you multiply, you got this, and you pass through a filter. Okay, to get only one side. 
future again. So you get this one. Okay. Dot dot dot. This is more correct. Okay, and then you add them together. Okay, now when you add them together, you get this. This is F12, this is F1. We call this one a group. Okay, in a change in hierarchy, we call this one a group. And F1, they use the um, a uh, subcarrier of 64 kilohertz for F1. So this one, you, you ship another 4, right? Another 4K. Because each of the China, you give 4 kilohertz. So this one is 68. The last one is um, 108. Okay. However, the bandwidth for the whole thing. Okay, be careful. You have another 4 kilohertz here. Okay, so it's actually 64K to 112K. Okay, so 48 kilohertz here. This is a bandwidth for one group. Okay, so I, I just want to show you like the, a real example of how they combine the voice. Okay, so this is the actual frequency that they use. So this is one, one group. Suppose I... Suppose I define my group as a big, you know, like inside is a small uh, 12 channels, but I try to combine it, okay, into, into a group. So I, I have my red one. Suppose it's a spectrum of one group, okay. You can see in the slide that um, there is another layer or, or another level, okay. We can combine the group into supergroup. To combine a group into supergroup, we have five groups. So over here, we will have. Let me use um, the board. Okay, <laughs> it's a good board, so I can delete it, right? So now, suppose I have five of this, <laughs> and this is a group. Okay, so I have a group. This is one group, this is another group, this is another group, okay? So every group is like 64K to 112K, okay? 64K, 112K, 64K, 112K, hers. Ah, so I have five groups here, uh, S1, to S5, okay, now, when I, when I modulate, okay, when I modulate, I will get something like this, I will modulate, okay, with a um, sub carry of 420. So this one is 420 kilohertz. Okay, so 420K. Okay, so zero is moved to 420. Okay, so zero moved to 220, then I got something over here, right? This is my group. I move zero to 420K, so this is another 64, okay, so I, so this is my group, right? And another one, I move to another, you know, another um, frequency, which is 420 plus 48, right, 468, 468 kilohertz, okay? So that I have my group, this is group one, and this is group two. So I have five of this group, right? 
dot 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 I will have five of this group then when I combine I combine it I will get something like this So I have five groups. I call this one one super group. Okay, this is one super group which has a bandwidth of 240 kilohertz. So this is just like modulation, but you you modulate into uh, steps. Okay. First, the first time that you that you group, you group twelve voice channels together into a group, and then when you have group, you have you use five group, you combine five group together, you will get a uh, sixty voice channel, okay, as a super as a super group, and then when you have a super group, you can combine ten super group together to get a master group. So one master group will contain. 600 voice channels, okay? So you can, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, in practice they don't group like 600 voice channel at the at one level, okay? They group in in two level, level, okay? So they group 12 first and then 60, you know, 5, 5 of the 12, okay? Added to 260 and then 10 of the 60 added to 600 and you get a bandwidth of about 2.5 megahertz. 